giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We're going to move on to talk about the Houston World Championships. The Houston World Championship begins on Wednesday. Uh, matches start Wednesday evening. You can watch matches at uh, uh, theorangealliance.org slash stream or on the first Twitch. Um, so with that, Abbas, do you want to get us started with the Jeminson division? Of course, of course. So uh, before I just go into the Jemison division, one thing I want to discuss is like, I know like Detroit, it's obviously like really unbalanced divisions. And I think to an extent, there is some uh, unbalancement in Houston. But like, honestly, I'm kind of interested to see how this play plays out. And I haven't really like thought of who which division I would say is a clear winner yet. And uh, one thing I noticed in Jemison is we have a lot of really strong depot oriented teams and this uh this includes a uh, seven six seven one six one viper bots hydra eleven two six zero up a creek robotics nine eight two nine mac bots who is versatile in both in both um in both paths nine eight nine nine black diamond robotics and many others what i think is looking to be our top depot team is definitely 724 the well-known redneck robotics and it should be interesting to see like with the multitude of depot teams how this should play out in the finals and how this should affect alliance selection. And do you guys have anything to add about Redneck? So I Redneck, say. I think, has like a love-hate relationship in the FTC community, but yeah. I personally think that it's going to be amazing to see what they've done. Um, right. Their coach right. has come from a, a very long way, a long way yeah. and it's incredible to see how this team has sustained um, mm -hmm. even throughout all their troubles. Um, I'm really excited to see them. And I personally like growing up in first, going through FTC, they've been one of the biggest inspirations to any team. And to see them go back to the world championship and have a shot at winning that trophy, I think it's going to be really cool. Yeah, definitely. Did they and, uh, win Inspire at Worlds one time? No, I don't believe no. so. They won the sure. world championship three times. But they've won, yes. yeah, the championship. And I know this season they won Inspire at one of their qualifying tournaments or state championship. But, and yeah. They have won the, oh, man, Montana State Championships Inspire Award a couple times. Yes. So yes. maybe what you're thinking. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I know there's been some rumors about Redneck putting up some really high scores, which I don't doubt. But I guess we'll see at Houston in a couple of days. So on to the creator side for Jemison. Here we also have a couple strong teams. This includes Data Force, MacBots again, Redneck again, uh, Astromex 3409, Technova, who were part of the winning lines last year, and uh, some hopeful teams include my team Gears of Fire, unbiased plug for sure, uh, Tech Hog, and Team Titanium Tech. And despite all of these robots, again, the team I'm really excited to see is uh, Team 10219 Batteries Not Included. They've been putting up some solid scores in their practice runs, and I want to discuss certain aspects of their robot. So uh, here we just have one of their runs on YouTube showing. And uh, they're definitely a really strong double extension, uh, double angled extension robot. Maybe not as much as gluten free, but you know everyone can't be that strong. Um, and one thing I really noticed is how efficiently they pick up the minerals at the edge of the crater. And this is something I know a lot of teams have been pro uh, have been having problems with. And it's just like when you set your box down, it's kind of difficult to like maneuver around all the minerals. So you have like a set landing pad where you can just easily intake it. And I mean, it seems like batteries not included is wasting no time. Doing Doing this um of course they have that expected passive sorting system that's working extremely well and another thing is their extension system is like super solid uh have you guys do you guys have anything to add about that so i've looked at very very close pictures of this uh robot and right. the similarities of this robot and gluten free are very very like these robots are very very close in terms right. of their intake design and their depositing design mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. i think that They've really mastered this, and they are yeah. just, they're at that level of gluten-free. And right. so I think to be able to see them at Worlds, they have a really good shot at taking mm -hmm. home the gold. Mm. Mm -hmm. Ethan, Nathan? Oh, totally. I agree with you. They're, they're just an amazing team. Their robot's really incredible. It'll right. be very interesting to see how well they do. Uh, yeah. Hopefully they'll take a win. Mm -hmm. They're the first team I've seen that uses Actobotics channel and then a uh, linear rod and linear bearings. Yeah. And it's pretty yeah, bulky, but it seems yeah. to be really smooth. 
yeah, I, that was that was pretty. Uh, and it does. I don't know if it sags too much. Like I know problems like that a couple teams are or many teams are having is like with once their extension goes all the way out, is that it tends to sag a little bit. And like mm-hmm. unless you account for that, it can be a pretty big deal uh, during matches and things like that. So I think uh, ten two one nine with their design will be able to handle uh, defense and a little bit of rough play against their extension and all of that well, stuff. Well, and I'll say, Ethan, of course you love them if they're using Go Build Up. Uh, if you guys didn't know, use Go Build and Ethan's just going to love you. Uh, <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, if you use it bad, though, I'll, I might be a little bad. If you use it bad, <laughs> Ethan can help you out with some CAD. Or you can look it's at true. his drivetrain diagrams and how to use Go Build Up. That's true. Um, another team I want to talk to about talk about in Jemison is uh, Team Titanium Tech. They've been infamous this whole season, putting up really, really good OPR scores early in the season and definitely maintaining them. And the current rumor is that they're draining the whole close crater of Silvers. And so it should really be interesting to see if they can continue like keeping this up at Houston and if they decide to either go to the far crater or play defense for the rest of the match. What do you guys think? Uh, can they not do uh, gold minerals? Not as far as I know, but it, I mean, it may have changed from states. So I guess if you're going to max out a crater of silver minerals, then it's, it's all going to depend on who you're playing and how much time's left. But I'd say maybe go play a little defense because, right. uh, I mean, as you've, if you watch any FRC matches this year, the one thing you can learn is even slowing someone down a little bit is going to make an impact. And especially mm-hmm. this year with the FTC game, of how tight these fields are and how important it is, how every second is important. If you bump into someone, make them go the wrong path, slow them down for even like 10 or 15 seconds, you're gold. Oh, definitely. I, just- I haven't actually seen their bot, but I think that if they're able to drain silver and I'm playing against them, I'm going to try to go for all the silvers first. Right, right. That's definitely so, um, a strategy that's been discussed. Yeah. Um, the, from what I see, their bot is very like small and versatile. Um, it's, I mean, it's just that like long tennis ball type extension. And then it's just like a very compact bot. And I find it like, it's, it's, I think it's pretty well designed. Like I definitely like the approach they took to the game. And um, the next team, the final team I want to discuss is 7161 Viperbots Hydra, and they also seem to be one of the Depot favorites. As everyone knows, they've been a very successful team over the years, and they were part of the finalist alliance in Houston last year, and I'm sure they'll keep up their consistency this year. Um, Much like many Houston bots, they feature a non-Mechanum drivetrain, and I think this is, like, really important for the Depot side bots, because um, as a Depot bot, you want to be able to play effectively play defense, right? And in order to do this, being pushed around with a Mechanum drivetrain is not really going to help, in my opinion. And um, in this video, their cycle path seems pretty good and uh, consistent and reliable, which is definitely uh, is the making of a good Depot bot. Do you guys have anything else to talk about them? No, not really. Every mm-hmm. time I watch their auto, it looks like it's sped up. It's really right, fast. I'm not sure if it is. It's like, it's a really good auto, though. I mean, it doesn't it seem to interfere. It doesn't seem like it'll interfere with other teams. And I mean, that I think that that should be interesting to see how it plays out. Like, autos f- affecting each other. And if teams purposely make autos to, uh, like, conflict with others. Do you guys think that'll happen, or...? No, because I think as soon as you go to start conflicting with others, you're just taking it away from yourself. Right. I, I actually disagree um, because let's say you can create an auto that can s- prevent the opponent from parking versus mm-hmm. you create an auto that can potentially do one cycle. Right. I would probably create the auto that prevents them from parking and try mm-hmm. and then you get 10 points that way, which is almost a guaranteed 10 points versus 10 points of maybe scoring a cycle during auto. I disagree, though, because there is the penalty for interfering with another opponent's autonomous. Right. And depending on how strict that's called, mm-hmm. yeah. you might get dinged there. And I'd rather just sit and try to score. Maybe you only score one. Maybe sometimes score two or three. Uh, in this game, penalties aren't worth it. And especially with uh, the vast inconsistencies of refereeing. Uh, I'm pretty darn region. sure it was clarified as legal to interfere with parking on the forum. Okay. But I have to double check that. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. 
Yeah. Um, another thing is that, like, as we've been talking about, like, this, during the show, is that, like, you want to interfere with the creator bot legally when you're playing Depot. And um, in the cycles I saw from 7161, it didn't seem like they were doing that. They were mostly keeping to themselves, going right from the corner and just getting their minerals and coming back. I think teams who can employ that strategy of just messing with the creator bot a little bit, it's going to be much more effective. And I think it's going to be really uh, point like efficient points wise. And I think it'll like in the end, there'll be a net gain instead of a net loss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see. It's all about that trading up with defense. So as a depot right. bot, you're probably going to score less. So if right. you're one second, if, if the creator bot's scoring twice as fast as you, your one second of defense is really worth two seconds of their scoring time. So Definitely. that can be a trade up as long as you can make sure that you're not negatively sacrificing your own time to interfere mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. All right, that's uh, that's all I have for Jemison today. If uh, now I guess Nathan, you gonna talk about Franklin? Yes, we have some uh, pretty fantastic teams over here in Franklin, and I think the division overall is perform is going to perform quite well. Uh, so there could be some debate on this, but I think that the top team in Franklin. Uh, is 7105 Swift Intergalactic Space Llamas from Vast, North Carolina. Uh, their uh, highest OPR this season is 270.3. Uh, they are a mechanical wheeled robot. Swift qualified for Worlds as the first pick on the winning alliance at the, from the North Carolina State Championship. Uh, I mean, I think kind of just even looking at their OPR, it's uh, 35 points higher than the next ro uh, next best robot in the division, which is uh, Rise of Hephaestus. Wow. So, right. Um, I mean, I think, I think they're just doing quite well. And, uh, I mean, we're going to see this, we're going to see this video for the hundredth time in a minute, but they were part of that 522 score that came out of a qualifier in North Carolina when they were partnered with, uh, 5064 Aperture Science. They're just, and, uh, uh, one thing yeah. I want to add about Swift is like, they're one of those really well-known teams in the FTC community, especially in Houston. I mean, last year they were finalist alliance captain at Houston. They were, I believe, finalist alliance captain at South Supers. And I mean, they've just always had really successful seasons. And I mean, it looks like they're going to keep, like, keep maintaining that. So, Yeah, it's actually really cool. Swift came up to the MTI and um, some of their members are actually old members from 7182, which is a mechanical paradox, uh, the mm -hmm. original mechanical paradox. And so just to get to see them again on MTI, I think they may be there again next year. Um, it's cool to see how dominant of a team they've become. Totally, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely agree with you. Um, so the next top team in the Franklin division comes from San Diego, and they are, as I just mentioned, uh, 4216, Rise of Hephaestus. So unlike a good deal of the top teams, just kind of generally, uh, who use mechanum wheels, uh, ROH is a tank drive robot, and they have an OPR of uh, 235 going into this Houston championship. They were the second place Inspired winner at the San Diego championship and the finalist alliance captain there. So what do you guys think of ROH this year? Um, well, they're, I, I was gonna oh, say, they're I a uh, of team sponsored by IFI this year, right? Yes. They're, an, uh, they're an IFI team. Okay, I'm okay. I'm interested to see how they improve. Their last competition they showed up with, I believe it was like an angled slide bot similar to Gluten Free and A680. Um, but it appears to be not very super well refined. So that'll be cool to see at Champs. Maybe some good improvement there. And I think we could see a lot of points out of these guys. Yeah, Ethan, I think uh, the reason, like you're saying, like it's not super refined is before uh, before Arizona New Mexico State Championship, they actually had a completely different robot. And um, this was one of those, this was really similar to 3101's design. And in the sense that it was just a single rotating double extension. And it just went back and scored, went down and scored. And it was one of those teams. But now they completely rebuilt the robot uh, for the state championship. And I think just taking that time between the championship and worlds to just refine it, work out those kinks. It's really, really going to help them. I guess while we're just watching this video right here, what do you guys think of uh, cup bots? Do you think that we're going to see them perform pretty well at worlds this year? Or do you think they're going to kind of get uh, surpassed by uh, kind of your more meta robots uh, going in, uh, with the arms? Um, I think. Oh, you go, can go, go ahead. ahead. 
Oh, okay. Um, I think that it's going to be really easy to play defense against them. Because one thing I saw at Florida State Championships uh, with Royal Blue, 10-3-4-5, uh, is they were, they, they were playing a cup bot. And every time that bot would go for silvers, they would quickly either outtake those silvers or intake them and just push just push them out of the way. And it was just so effective. It, like, it just stunned me. And I think, like, at Houston, that could be a really viable strategy for just that simple defense on crater bots. I think when a top-tier team gets paired with a cup bot, especially at the championship, um, they might get told to play defense um, mm -hmm. just because they aren't able to score nearly as fast as um, one of the higher-tier teams. And especially if you teach them how to play defense, these bots are pretty solid so um especially this one that we can see right now um mm -hmm. i think that a lot of these teams could be potentially playing defense and causing shifts in the um rankings and in alliance selection right right yeah i'm just kind of in awe right now of what uh 12767 i don't know if that was intentional right there but we just kind of saw them play some defense on ROH, getting right in front of them. I think that's completely legal as long as you're not doing it for more than like five seconds. Mm -hmm. um, that, was, that was pretty strategic. Um, whoa, bot incoming into that park. <laughs> <laughs> just full send it over that crater edge. Um, all right, so let's uh, move on a little bit. So coming up next in terms of top teams, we've got 11039 Innovators. We've got 12808 Revamped Robotics, who look awesome. Uh, 3101 Boombots, and then 5064 Aperture Science, and plenty more solid teams. Uh, while I continue talking, we'll show this uh, awesome video again. Uh, this is the uh, 522 high score from a qualifier in North Carolina. Uh, looking at the Red Alliance, we see uh, Aperture Science and um, Swift. Mm -hmm. So, at the so North Carolina State Championships, we saw uh, 5064. Excuse me actually play depot with your more traditional angled deposit slide robot which yeah. was fairly unheard of at that point and they didn't do amazingly but i think it kind of showed that that design can be used to play depot which is really interesting from a strategic point of view mm -hmm. totally uh, i'm curious what you guys think about these two teams aperture science and swift do you guys think they maybe we could see a uh, partnership up again at worlds maybe get a higher score or do you think, like, I think defense is there's going to be a lot of luck involved with the match schedule because, like, yes, these are very, very top teams, but a lot of other teams coming to Houston are as well. And, like, in order to get this, like, ideal alliance, I mean, just all the cards are going to have to be played out right. So, I would be highly surprised if they haven't already started practicing together and getting ready for right. Worlds. I know mm -hmm. as soon as um, we found out that we were with. Um, a local team last year, I think, uh, at Supers. We were with uh, Mechanical Paradox Cubed in the same division. We started practicing a lot with that team and getting really right. good. So mm -hmm. I know that happened with Brainstormers and Two Bits and a Bite last year. Um, I think I would be surprised if that wasn't happening with um, Aperture Science and with Swift because those two teams know each other really, really well. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Totally, and yeah. I think um, one thing is Swift. Uh, after their like after their five twenty two match, they had another championship or another competition, and their arm actually sped up, and it was just crazy seeing how efficient they were now. And I think, I mean, they've obviously had a lot of time to work on their robot, so I don't know what they've been doing with their time, but I think it's going to be something good that they show up with at Houston. And no, I totally agree with you. And um, some of the other teams to mention in the Franklin Division, the Franklin Division, are going to be uh, ten two ninety eight Brainstormers, who were the winning Alliance captain at NorCal, uh, twelve three fifty seven Inconceivable, the Idaho winning Alliance captain, uh, eighty five ninety six Robo Knights out of uh, North Carolina, who were the winning Alliance captain at that state championship. I just think overall this division is going to be pretty competitive. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess a boss, what do you? Boss of Sean Ethan, what do you guys think? Uh, oh my God, it's that kid again. <laughs> I always forget about the kid in this video, the overhyped kid in the bottom left. Um, do you guys think these divisions are pretty balanced? I know that probably in a minute we're going to talk about Detroit not being too balanced. Uh, so, do you think do you think we're going to see some pretty competitive play uh, coming out of both divisions? I'm honestly confused about how they make these divisions because, like, 
sometimes it feels like they're really balanced. Like last year, I thought that they were fairly balanced um, because you it was a close finals. It wasn't like um, easy for one division to win. But this year, it seems like they definitely put a different algorithm to use or the fact that they don't have supers as a buffer has caused the divisions to shake up a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I think, um, I mean, I think the divisions are pretty balanced, but, like, as I was saying before, like, um, with Franklin, it seems to me there's, like, a lot of really top teams, right? But, like, in order for, like, I don't know how likely it is for, like, a really strong alliance of three, and I think what will end up happening is, like, you have, like, seven or eight, like, solid teams, and then you have, like, those above average teams that are going to take up, like, the nine through 12 slots of second picks, whereas in Jemison, I feel like you have more than 12 really strong like almost finals worthy teams and i think like that should be pretty interesting to see like how the uh, franklin picks uh happen yeah totally um i guess i kind of want to go back to this for a moment do you guys think that uh 724 is going to perform really well again and maybe win another championship think it's possible yeah completely possible yeah I, i definitely think they'll perform well yeah because, I mean, looking at their OPR, they don't seem to be – I mean, OPR is not perfect measurement, but they don't mm-hmm. seem to be uh, really up there in terms of uh, past performance. So, OPR right. is not the best statistic for this year. Um, I found that with OPR, it's very random because of who you're paired with and who you're paired, with it, who you're paired against. The only way you're going to have a perfect endgame OPR is if your partner always hangs. And if your partner doesn't always hang, you're going to lose – part of that 50 points usually you'll get pushed down to like 30 and um i think from that it's just not a reliable way to rank teams so our team has completely thrown out opr we don't even look at it anymore because of just how unreliable it can be um one thing i want to add to that ishan is actually our opr if i remember correctly it's above 50 it's like 50.2 and i've like i don't know how that happened but um Yeah, it's there. And I think with Redneck, what they provide is not only like a really high scoring mineral count, but also the defense they play and like the strategy and how well they're able to adapt to situations. And that's like really, really critical of a of such a high level team. One of the things that I think a lot of teams don't take into account at Ford Field or at Worlds is how much experience matters. I mean, they've been on Da Vinci Field five times, I think. And Mm -hmm. They know how to play under pressure. So to be able to um, go in with a very, very strong robot is um, and a strong team as a whole that has experience, that knows how to, they've been quote unquote battle tested. That's right. something that yeah. our team definitely looks for whenever we're making any picks. And especially at the world championship, I would definitely take a higher, um, I would take a team that's slightly worse just because they've been battle tested. Right. And um, Nathan, I, one more thing I wanted to add about Houston is, like, I know we mentioned earlier that we would be talking about, like, some teams that we think would be, like, very interesting, like, pop-ups and, like, yep. p- teams on the rise. And I think uh, teams like those include, I know Super 7 from Florida. Actually, I was talking to them earlier, and oh, they yeah. went through a rebuild. And so it should be interesting to see how they perform at Houston. They were last year's Inspire winner. So, I mean, hopefully they can bring in some of that, like, really strong uh, like as an old team that like battle veterans as uh, Ishan was saying and I think like that should be interesting and also with Super 7 is KN03 I mean they've been a really strong consistent robot over the years and I think they're going to show that again at Houston this year yeah no KN03 has always been pretty great and consistent mm-hmm. um, and I mean the reveals are always really cool as people are talking oh, about in yeah. chat yeah. we need your help to keep fun loud live and independent Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.